If you've never tried the Good and the Beautiful books, I haven't either. So I'm excited to dive into these with you today and see what's inside and if it's something that would be a good fit for you and your homeschool journey. Hey there viewers, welcome to my channel. We're in the midst of summer and you know, it's nice to take a break from thinking about having to do school. I'm always the person who plans ahead. So this is actually a new curriculum that I've never tried before. I'm gonna take you through a journey with me in looking inside this curriculum. It will be a seventh grade science for us. So I'm kind of unsure how to proceed with this curriculum. This is definitely new territory for me. I am normally more along the lines of a traditional style, but loosely followed. This is definitely more of the free, whatever grade level just kind of hop in, right? And learn as a group. I only have one student, so that was not my draw to this curriculum. Um, but the content really stood out to me and especially because my son loves science and loves nature, I knew that this would be something that would help him connect a lot of dots from the past couple years of science. So what I'm gonna show you today is the good and the beautiful curriculum. So many things I've heard about the Good and the Beautiful curriculum is that it works really well for them. I totally think that's great, especially for those who have multiple children and need to teach a subject to a group of kids. I was really intrigued by the content of this unit study for botany. This is for third through eighth grade, as you can see. I bought a book that is supposed to accompany this right here and I also got the student journal which I'll show you really quick. Um, but we're going to dive into this book together because I think you're going to be really surprised as to maybe some of the content and how rich it is. I will say at the same time there might be some things in here that we won't do. I think some of the activities might be a little bit boring for my son so we probably won't do all of them. It's more of the content in the book that really stood out that I think he would find very interesting. So I'm not really giving this a review. I haven't used it yet so I can't really tell you why it did and why it didn't work for us. At the end of the school year, I would definitely maybe give you a review on this to tell you how I feel about it. I think this was worth the money just having it on the side to kind of fill in the gaps. This is kind of something I felt like we could do anytime and just kind of incorporate it. There's no tests and quizzes. It's just like reading and journaling. This was a suggested reading book. It wasn't necessary to buy. Again, my son loves all things nature. So I thought that this would be a great book to have on the side as we kind of go through some of the things of botany because it does touch on that. But as you can see, this gets into the depths of, I would say fungus, <laughs> fungi, fungi. My son just loves books and to look up special facts about birds, plants, you name it. So I thought this would be a good one for us to just keep. We're gonna take a look into this deeper. I'm not gonna show you everything in it. And then lastly is the student journal. They break down the student journal. If you are new to the good and the beautiful, they break it down. This is the seventh to eighth grade, I believe is as high as they go up to. Honestly, it's just a basic journal that kind of just walks you through things in the book. So it does have a little bit of extra information here that you can see, but it gives you places to put in observations and notes, basically write down any extra information. That interactive part is really the point of the journal book. And basically just to show that they did the work of reading and that they're understanding parts of it really well. I'm not really gonna walk you through this, but you get the idea where it's having you write definitions, having you write notes, having you draw. I think this is really worth it to buy and purchase with whatever grade level you need it for. They have George Washington Carver. So this isn't in the student journal, but it's just like a little extra thing here and there. I highly suggest this as part of the kit if you're really wanting to get into the unit studies. I think they're really necessary to show that the kids are really understanding what they're reading and what their activities are. They're just more engaging in the study itself. So this is the companion book. As you can see, it covers a wide variety. I'm not gonna get into all the names, I'm not even gonna attempt to read every single one of these to you, but I'm gonna let you see the pictures inside because they're so cool. It's a really well done 
book. I really like the breakdown here, as you can see. And I think it's really got a lot of great pictures in here. So it does give like the facts of the common name, the type, the scientific name, where it's found, and the substrate that it would obviously be found in. Then it has a glossary of terms in the back. Obviously these are going to be used throughout the book, so you might have to refer to these terms. Okay, next we're gonna be doing the botany book here. It goes over some stuff here, the vocabularies in the front, and it's gonna break down into introduction of botany, the life cycle of a plant, parts of a plant, seeds, flowers part one, flowers part two, leaves, photosynthesis, plant cells, plant classification, growing plants, trees, and carnivorous and poisonous plants. Here it gives you the outline of the supplies needed for any activities. This breaks down into the vocabulary. They make it really easy to remember with the big words. Again, really great pictures here. Some of these are cutouts. If you use this book the way it's intended, you will be cutting out different things and utilizing them either in the journal or for activities. The artistry in some of this is just so good. I like that it's a spiral notebook, as you can see, because there's certain pages where you can just really flip over and see from this angle, which really helps a lot. I'm really impressed with it. I think it'll be a great, great thing for us to dive into. And there we go. If you're interested in more The Good and the Beautiful Science curriculums for third through eighth grade, especially the seventh and eighth grade parts of it, I will be uploading two more videos on two other unit studies that I purchased. So you'll wanna make sure that you see those. They are for the science again. So if you're interested, make sure you click that bell so that way you will get notified when that video releases. I would love to hear from you. If you use The Good and the Beautiful curriculum or if you stopped using it, why you love it, why you don't like it, 
please let me know in the comments what you think because again not all curriculums are for everyone I'm not saying yes this is gonna work for you I'm not saying it won't just hear from other moms if any of you other homeschool families share and comment on this video or my upcoming videos it helps really let other people know what to do and why they may or may not like it as well I love hearing other people's comments so make sure that you leave me one also let me know what you're doing this summer, how you're spending your time, are you schooling, are you taking a break? I always love to hear where people go and what they're doing and what they're focusing on or maybe you're using the summer to educate your kids on some fun things on the road while you travel. And I look forward to sharing the next videos with you on the Good and the Beautiful Science Unit Studies. But until then, hope you're having a fun summer and shine bright homeschoolers.